So welcome to this video about concepts of experiments and Q-codes. So in this video I'm going to explain to you how the real-world experiments actually translate into Q-codes experiments um, and you will learn about the different concepts that are basically implied into the, in the code. Um, but in order to understand about that let's first start with the real-world scenario. Let's think about a scenario where we want to measure transport in a nanowire device. So first of all we have to have a nanowire device, right? So this is going to be the nanowire device and of course it doesn't necessarily have to be this kind of a device. You can think of very very different devices as well. Um, okay so we want to start with a pair of metallic leads then we will probably also have an inner pair of metallic leads and I will come to the measurements in a second. And maybe we also have a gate which is applied to this sample. Okay, so let's assume we wanted to perform a current driven measurement. So then we need a current source. Um, let's just wire this up quickly. Um, so this is going to be our current source. Um, then in the next step, <clears throat> what we probably also want to have is a, a voltage meter in order to measure the voltage drop across our sample. Um, and this can basically look like this. So let's just draw this quickly over here. So uh, this is now our voltage meter. Um, and then in the next step, we also want to have a gate voltage which uh, applies to the sample. So then we would also put another voltage source, which I call the gate voltage up here. Okay, so uh, what can we do with this uh, setup now? What, is the, uh, what, is, what does the measurement look like? Um, well, basically we can sweep uh, our current, which we apply to the sample, and then we can measure the voltage across the voltage drop across our sample. So if we would do that we could for instance uh, measure the resistance of our sample by simply performing an IV fit. So we would measure the IV characteristics of our sample with the voltage and the current and then by fitting this curve we could extract the resistance of our sample. But uh, we also have a top gate, so another thing that we can do as well is we could also sweep the top gate. And here you can already see that things can get a little bit more difficult because we don't only have one parameter which we can change, but in this case we already have two, so we have a two-dimensional space. And of course this can be or become more uh, complex as we add more and more parameters like temperature, magnetic field and so on. So. All of this has to be taken into account by the software and has to be taken into account when understanding the software structure or infrastructure. Uh, and this is uh, how the, how the Q-Codes software infrastructure comes into place. Um, so first of all, we start with the instruments. Uh, the instruments are, as you can see in the, in the sketch, uh, the different instruments that we marked here already. So we have a current source, we also have a, a voltage source and then we might we might also have a top gate. So these are our instruments. And the instruments themselves, which, which we have now, so the different instruments in this scenario here, they group up and become a so-called station. So you can see down here, different instruments uh, are being grouped up into stations. Um, what kind of instruments are there actually? So um, as we just saw in that little explanation, there is the uh, hardware instrument. Uh, this is basically an instrument that is controlled by a computer um, via a driver, which can also be uh, added as needed. Um, and these are basically controlled during the measurements. But then there can also be um, different other kinds of instruments and one example for that is the manual instrument. So a manual instrument is an instrument that doesn't have a computer interface like if you have to turn some kind of a knob or let's say um, your, your Christhead is operated manually and you control the temperature by, by, via a manual action then you can also save these or you can, you can store 
the um, interaction, the manual interaction with this manual instrument parameter. This can just be added into the program um, and then everything is also added into your data later on so it makes um, understanding the measurement a lot, a lot easier if you have all the data. Um, then there's also the simulation instrument and the simulation instrument can really be everything um, but it doesn't necessarily, it can, but it doesn't necessarily need to be related to the actual instrument situation. Just a little bit of an example. Um, in this case, let's assume we wanted to measure the power in our sample. Then this would be a combined parameter, um, uh, which is actually not a, not a parameter that we measure, um, but rather uh, a mathematical model that is behind a parameter that we measure. In this case, a very simple one. The power uh, that, we, that we measure in the sample is just a product of the current and the voltage. But of course, this can be much more difficult as models can become more, more difficult. And uh, this is basically what is being caught by this, manual, uh, by this um, simulation parameter. Uh, furthermore, you can see that we also have a meter parameter. What is the meter parameter? Um, let's just simply assume in our scenario with the nanowire here, we wanted to do a so-called differential resistance measurement. In a differential resistance measurement, you basically add up a direct current with an alternating current, so an AC plus DC. Uh, and usually the way that this is done, at least uh, in some of the setups is, by using a mixer and then adding a constant voltage source or a constant current source with a alternating current or alternating voltage source. And then by adding up these two, you get this mixed current, but usually these two sources are um, physically different instruments. So they don't necessarily need to be uh, integrated into one instrument. But of course, it feels more native in the, in the code or in the under, later understanding of the measurement to put that into one instrument. And this can be done via this meter instruments on a software level. Mm, okay, so now we know that we have this different kind of instruments here in our scenario. And as I already said, these group up into a station. And the station has also some very useful um, functions like the snapshot, which is basically um, a software image where it where it takes kind of a snapshot of your whole setup so it saves all the different settings of your instruments. This is kind of like a lab book entry because you won't forget any settings that you set in some instruments because this is all stored for the whole station so for the whole setup in this uh, snapshot. These are usually stored in a JSON file which is a uh, kind of comes from from Java um, which is a standard format for, for saving, uh, saving labeled data. Mm, and the nice thing about stations is you can also use YAML files. These are different kind of files to initialize your setup. So you can basically write down in a file all the different settings that you choose in order to start with your measurement. And then you just tell the station to initialize and all the, the setup work is basically done in that file. Of course, you could also do that in your code, but the nice thing about this file is you can easily also share it with others uh, in collaborations and also use it for repeating experiments. So you don't have to copy code, uh, but just use these files and they are way more handy than the version of uh, shifting around codes. Um, then you also saw already these measurement, uh, these instruments perform measurements. So they measure parameters and they also apply parameters. Like in this uh, scenario that I just explained to you above, we want to apply a current. So we set a parameter, which is the output current, and then we measure a different parameter, which is the voltage. So we have different kinds of parameters here, which are the instrument parameters. <clears throat> and there we decide between the so-called uh, get, set, and basically both kind of um, uh, instrument parameters. So as I already said, set parameters are like if you want to set the current, get parameters are like if you want to get the uh, voltage applied. And let's just assume you would have the magnetic field. Magnetic field could be a parameter which you want to set and get at the same time. Basically, you tell the cryostat to go from, uh, you, you start at one Tesla and you say you want to go to minus one Tesla. 
and then somewhere in between you always want to sample the magnetic field then you would need to be able to set the magnetic field but also to get the magnetic field at the point that you are measuring at. Um, so this set, get and sometimes also parameter set can do both. Um, then there's also computed measurements per, or computed parameters. Uh, these could, for example, be the resistance if you just divide the current and the voltage. So um, voltage by current is the resistance and this could be a computed parameter. This is of course a parameter that you would get. This is nothing that you can set. You can't set the resistance. You just compute it from parameters that you get from your actual experiment. And then there's also independent settings, uh, which you can set as well. Um, okay, so now we, we understand what the parameters actually are. Now we want to measure. And in order to measure, we have to have an experiment. So the experiment usually uh, is kind of a group of data sets. What data sets are, I will come to in a second. Um, and the important thing about experiments is you usually have a name of the experiment, like for example, a gate uh, measurement, a gate dependent IV measurement. And then you also have a sample name. The sample name um, in this case means the, yeah, the name of the sample. So you want to say, um, I'm measuring my, my nanowire device 3 or however you want to call it. And then there's also a start date or a start time um, label connected to that. So it's easier to later on identify because sometimes we, we, it's easier for us to, to use a timestamp than uh, trying to understand the, um, the experiment by the sample and the name. Sometimes you also perform the same experiment several times and then you want to have only the latest one which you performed and then it's easier to take the the start time, for example. And if you later on also tell the software that the, uh, in, that the measurement is ending, then you also get an end date stamp. Okay, so what kind of measurements do exist in Q-codes? Um, first of all, I want to talk about the measure one, which is just um, measuring. The nice thing about it is it has that integrated data handling. That means if you perform this kind of measurement, you will be able to use all the different uh, data saving functions that I will come to in a second. Um, but uh, first of all, it doesn't have any loops, so it just performs a measurement. There, there is no automated uh, handling of the, of the uh, experiment itself connected to that. And there's also no background data acquisition. That means you can't do a real-time plotting of your data. So usually you only do measure if you can't do it with the loop. Uh, so what is loop actually? Uh, in order to understand that, let's come back to our initial example. Um, so the loop in this case could, for example, be we start in our IV curve at zero uh, applied current. And then in a loop, we say we want to go up to, let's say, um, maybe one microamp uh, at a stepping of something smaller than one microamp. And then you basically just ramp up the the uh, current. So what do you need for that? You need to set parameters. So you need to know what is the parameter that we want to sweep current. Then you need to define the task, which would then be that you want to sweep the current. Then you can also set a so-called waiting time. The waiting time is the time between two measurements. Maybe you want to wait for this uh, for the system to stabilize again. This could, for example, be the case if you want to sweep the magnetic field to a certain point and then the system heats up a little bit and you want it to cool down again for one minute. This could, for example, uh, be the case. Or if you have a lock-in amplifier, then you sometimes also have a time constant connected with the measurement. So you need some time in order to uh, reach the actual value. And this can be done by weight. Then you also have the opportunity to uh, define a break condition. So uh, if some threshold of leakage in the gate is, for example, um, being overcome, then the loop is breaking. And then you can, of course, also add additional loops, like I already explained here. Um, you don't only sweep the uh, sweep the IV, but maybe you also want to sweep your top gate. Then you would, of course, have two loops. One is the IV, and then for each different top gate, and uh, you want to perform an IV curve, 
So uh, you start at top gate zero, then you go up to one volt, then you want to perform an IV again and so on and so forth. Uh, so you can also add different of these loops together. And the nice thing about it is you have this uh, background functionality that means you can plot the data in real time then you also have threading, which basically means you can paralyze uh, cer certain parts of these measurements, like for example, measuring parameters uh, can happen paralyzed, so you don't need to measure each um, instrument after each other in a sequence, but rather do all at the same time, so the measurement is being conducted a little bit faster. And then you also have the data management connected with that, that means um, the loop is already managing how the data is arranged in the in the whole database later on. Um, and that already leads me to the data set, which is the last part of this first video. Um, the data set is supposed to take care of that whole data saving, um, which means data could be stored in a database, but it could also be stored as a file. Um, it takes care of the grouping so everything is so the whole measurement is grouped together uh, as one block in that whole um, yeah data set it also gives context like for example by a snapshot snapshot uh, you can you can get some context of where, what different instruments were being used at what time um, but also things like labels of the instruments uh, units of the parameters that you are measuring all of that is also being part of that data set. Um, and this is basically done by these typical uh, data labels like name, label, unit, and also set points. Um, so this is just like a broad basic overview of uh, what, what the structure of the Q-Codes code actually looks like. And the next step we want, of course, to perform a simple loop measurement and get right into it.